Hello, welcome to my channel again. Went and picked up a uh, DC to DC battery charger for charging my solar batteries going down the road because I don't have panels on the roof. I take them out of the RV and set them up wherever I end up because I stay there for a while wherever I go. But uh, what we have here is a Renogy 40 amp DC to DC battery charger. It's for flooded gel, AGM, and lithium. And it, it copies your solar charge too because it uses the multi-stage charging, your float, your bulk, your absorption, all that stuff. Uh, seems pretty decent. A lot of good reviews. Uh, it's a 40 amp, which I think is, is fine. They have a 20 amp, but you need something a little bigger. The 40 amp should be good. And for the price for this, a lot of these units are $400, $500. I mean, I've seen units that were $1,000. You know, they may have had Bluetooth on them or what have your, you know, maybe a little bit more features, but I don't need that. This is simple, easy to use. i got to find a place to put it over there, somewhere over there. Uh, I'm going to run it directly off the alternator, not the battery. Now, I haven't opened this up yet. i got to read the directions to make sure that I can do that. I don't see what the big difference would be, you know, coming directly off the alternator, because then it will be a shorter trip. I can just lift that up and go right to my batteries whenever I get that done. I need two more batteries. Those are just kind of sitting there for now until I get two more and then I can make a cupboard for them. But anyway, yeah. So, uh, and it, uh, it also has the D signal input to power on and off the charger. But I'm going to run it directly to my battery or somewhere. I'll probably just make a loop from here to here. But I'm going to install a switch so that I can turn it on, on and off. It doesn't need to be running all the time. I mean, if I go for a five-hour trip, these batteries will probably be charged anyways. This is just backup for when it rains. I get them batteries charged if I have to run it or run the gen. I have a generator back there. But this seems like a pretty nice switch. It's lit up. They're really bright, though. I'm not sure if I'm going to wire up the, uh, the light part of it because... Driving down the road, I have a couple more over these over there, and I ended up pulling that wire because it was just too bright driving down the road. But let's crack this thing open, see what we got. So what we got here? I already cut it open, I paused it. You guys know how to open a box. Let's see what we got here. Renogy. I like Renogy so far. I have their 100 watt panel, and basically that's all I'm <laughs> charging my two. Uh, batteries with my AGM batteries with and with a uh, only a hundred watts coming in my average is maybe maybe 12 amps coming in which is probably not good for them batteries they say the lowest to go is 12 amp to come in but I charge my laptop everything all day and then I can run all night and uh, it's charged by noon the next day of every, with everything that I run as long as it doesn't rain but I don't mind that energy I'm gonna be expanding with that I'm gonna put two more batteries and I want I want 800 watts of power for now and then uh, once I can get lithium and do everything else I'll probably just sell this whole setup to somebody and get the lithium but it's just a beginner I don't have a budget to go and spend ten thousand dollars on on everything you know so what I've been doing with my rebuild and my RV is a little bit of everything I got enough power here to, to, to handle what I need but I got an inverter that'll handle 3,000 watts so I can expand all this very very well it's my mess of wires over there don't mind that my bathroom's apart right now and I have the power off so I have to run an extension cord up to the sink up above the sink that runs my dehumidifier here anyway let's get back to the subject you guys want to see that and other stuff look at this we got stickers oh, sweet let's stick them on my window but I don't mind energy so far some people complain about them but they're a lot cheaper than a lot of other places when it comes to some stuff. Limited warranty, registering your purchase will allow you to stay in touch in the time. Yeah. You have to register this to get the warranty going. Good. Not to bed. Uh, There's the manual. Get some better lighting here. DC battery charger. 
This is going to come in really handy because, like I said, I don't have all my solar that I need. I just buy a little bit at a time, a little bit of everything. I got to purchase a 12 volt fridge here pretty quick, too. Of course, safety instructions, general notice. And also, 40 amps is plenty. And my RV alternator should handle it. I mean, I'll do a couple tests on it, and I have another meter up there that is just for my uh, my starter battery. So if the, I'll notice a difference if my battery is not taking a charge, it won't uh, it won't be up to 14 volts. So I'll know if I have to upgrade my alternator. I hope not. I mean, this this thing should have a pretty good RV should have a pretty good alternator in them. Safety with connecting the product. Pretty good directions. Pretty simple. Not bad. We're working on batteries. Yeah, yeah. General information topic. So the DC to DC series battery charger. Most effective way to charge your yeah. Most effective way to charge your auxiliary battery house batteries. But I actually have two. I have two house batteries, and then I have a whole other setup. I have actually three different battery banks set up in here. It's just the way it's configured. I didn't want to put my batteries in the front. Here's your identification of parts. A couple fans on it. That's good. That's good. It's got a heat sensor on it too. You probably got to buy that separately. I'm not going to worry about it because my batteries are staying right there. I'm going to get two more and put them long ways and build like a little box over them. Could put stuff on it or use it. I don't want to put them batteries outside. My house batteries aren't down there. They're in the front and I didn't want them to be outside in the weather. That's why I have two different battery bags because I left that all alone and ran my own. Let's see if we can get this a little better for you guys. So you your labeling. DIP switch. Yeah, you have to set this manually for your batteries also. I'll throw that in there. There's a little switchboard in the back. Whatever you have, AGM, lithium, you have to follow a certain code. I don't see that yet. Here's your dimensions. Some simple stuff here. I like this here. Manual, please note, you will find the most up-to-date manual at WN Energy. I always go in there and I download the PDF file for everything that I have from Energy or anything else from any other company. You just download it right to your computer. You don't have to worry about losing your manual. Just file it correctly and you'll always be able to uh, to find your manuals. I even downloaded this, the RV manual, and it's a 99, and I found it and I downloaded it. I have it on my laptop. Here's your installation. Never mount the product in areas where there is a risk of gas or dust explosion. That's for sure. Don't let it get wet. Try to keep it dry. Uh, the battery charger can be ho it installed horizontally as well as vertically. I'm going to go wherever the fans are at. Try to. Try to get the fans so they're not blocked by anything. I keep it out of a dusty environment, that's for sure. It's going to get mounted right in here. Which is probably a good idea. There's a different ways you can mount it. A couple little screws. I'll also uh, get some pieces of wood and lift this up because I'm laying it flat down, and uh, to get some airflow underneath this, I do that with everything. I, I did that with my with my inverter. There's little chunks of wood under there. It helps out. The fan never turns on. I don't have much of a load. I'm only running a couple laptops, but uh, cable cross connections. Okay, good. It, it tells you what you need is in length. If you're running an 8 foot, the recommended fuse would be 30 amp. Okay, that's for the 20. That's for the 40. We're at the 40 here. Let's look at this one. If you're going 2 foot, you need 6 gauge, 8 foot, 6 gauge, 16 foot, 4 gauge. I have 6 gauge. I'm going to use some 6 gauge. And I'm not going that far. My alternator is 2 foot away from where I'm mounting this. I'll be right. 6 gauge seems to be a very common wire for, for wiring stuff up. It, it 
It's almost compatible with everything. You don't have to worry about anything. So you got to connect a battery charger, alternator starter. I guess I could go to the starter if I wanted to. Yeah, it wouldn't really make a difference, would it? I'm going to the alternator though. There's your output housing. Shows you how to mount everything here. Shows you how to hook up the sensor. I don't. I'm not sure if I'm going to get a heat sensor. Not sure. I went and picked up some good lugs too. Some six, good six gauge lugs. And then here's how to hook up your D side. That that wire is 18 to 16 gauge. So, like I said, I'm just going to run a jumper from there to the battery and put a switch somewhere in the middle. That switch that I had showed you earlier in a previous segment. I want to be able to turn it on and off. Definitely do. There's the switching mechanism. I'll get one, two, three. Yeah, can't be too bad. I'll have to figure out what, AG, what AGM does. That's because that's what I'm running. It even explains how the charging works, the absorption, your float. It's nice. This thing copies your solar, your your charge controller. You know, batteries hold memories over a while. This is how you set your lithium. Looks like it's a series of switches. You just turn them on or off. You don't pick one or three. It's a series of this. Turn this one on. Turn that one on. Pretty simple. It looks like it even tells you the volts that you should be having coming out. Voltage type set. It tells you the set type not coming out. I like these directions. I don't really go into detail. There, here's here's that D wire again. Yeah, and you have to have that plugged in somewhere. Either you run the jumper like I'm going to run it. I'm going to do an installation video here too when I install it. Maybe today or tomorrow. I still got to finish my bathroom. But uh, yeah, that has to be hooked up no matter what. You can't just not hook it up. Either hook it up to your ignition, you like your lights or something. If you don't want to hook up a switch, you just want it to come on when the ignition's on. Find a light, power light, or whatever the ACC is. Here's your phases. Yeah, phase got the... It's got a bulk, absorption, and float. It only has three, but that's okay. Float keeps it up. Absorption, if you got an AGM battery, it really takes a while to absorb everything. It'll sit at 80% for a long time, and then all of a sudden it'll jump up to 95, and then sit there for a while and then charge. Every battery's different. We've got some troubleshooting here. There's a charging character. That's how it works. Those are your three stages. Yes, this has an under voltage protection and an over voltage protection too. I'm going to put a meter on it to see if it does 40 amp. All the other reviews that I've had it do 40.3. I mean, they're a little generous, I guess. They give you a point three more. That'll definitely charge the batteries. I'm going to time them, see how long it takes to charge two AGMs. It shouldn't take too long. Here's all your technical stuff. Normal input voltage. Rated charging. Idle power consumption. 0.4 amp. Yeah. I don't want to use anything. This thing uses power when it's off, so I would recommend hooking a switch up. Even if you want it on your ACC, just leave that switch on all the time. And if you feel that you're going to be storing your RV or your whatever you have, just uh, remember to flip that switch off. And then and it won't take that 0.4. Because let me tell you, that adds up after a while. It'll drain your battery. It takes a long time. Uh, this is the temperature compensation. You don't need it for lithium batteries. That's that little plug in the back. I guess they don't get very hot. I don't know. Never had one. Let's take it out of the box and see what we got. It's got pretty good packaging. It was in a box and then a box too. I bought it from Amazon. They put it in a box, which is good. Some foam on the sides. That's good. Seems pretty sturdy. Well, there you have it. It's out of the box. Pretty good build quality. 
I'm sure it dissipates the heat. It's got some fins over here. That's good. Because it gets warm in here sometimes. Really good build quality. Really good. There's your little switch there to uh, tell it what type of battery you have. i got to look up the AGM. There's your, uh, that's for your heat. For your heat on your batteries. Test it. If they get too hot, the single shut down. You know, if you wanted to use it for lithium, I don't know. I would still put the sensor on my lithium battery because lithium will freeze. If you're in a cold condition, you know, keep an eye on your battery, I guess. Uh, I don't know if you can I'll have to look into the directions to see if it if it would keep it from freezing. If it, if it would turn on, you know, I, I don't know. Even if it was charged, I don't know. I'll have to look into that. That's something I have no idea about. You see the DC battery charge, 40 amp. Back side, whoa, don't drop. There's lugs, those are pretty good. Covered, tops are covered, there's the fans. Nice, two fans. wonder if one's blown out and one's sucking in. I really am playing press, it's not too heavy. I didn't look at the weight. Nice bottom. Yeah, like I said, I'll be getting two pieces of wood, and I do it with all my electronics. I lift this up wherever it is on a wall, uh, laying down like this. I'm going to have mine mounted like this to lift this up a little bit to get some airflow underneath when you lift it. So. Well, so there you have it. Uh, like, subscribe my channel. I got many more. I got an air con or uh, another giant project going on. I have so many going on at once. But uh, like, subscribe, and many more. Catch you on the next vid later. And a fuse. I got two of these, 250 amp fuses. I've never used this style before. I always have the ones on the bottom that flip, but uh, you should run a fuse. This is a 50 amp. It should be feasible enough. 10 amp over, it'll be alright. But you gotta put one by your, by your battery. Well, I'm going to the alternator, so the closer you take this fuse to the to the source, the better. And then, uh, same thing to the battery. I have two of these. This is the box they come in. Uh, it's gonna be right by the battery bank. Seem pretty, seem pretty nice. Make sure you get the right gauge when you order these. This one here has a little fitting in it right there. I'm running 6 gauge, so I gotta take that out. That's for smaller wire. I don't know why you'd want to go that small with 50 amps, but. Well, there you have it. Once again, like, subscribe. Get this thing hooked up. I'm gonna make another video on uh, my installation on how I do it. Uh, have a good day. Later.